So this might be BSB and it might be a paddock full of the newest, shiniest things around, but every now and again, somebody turns up with something a little bit more interesting. Okay, this is a XR34, which is a 1980 factory bike. It was ridden by Mamola to win the British Grand Prix in 1980, but Mick Grant also won the 1981 Senior TT with it. So it's got some heritage. Yeah, there's probably not many bikes that have done a GP and a TT win. Um, right, so tell us through, um, is there anything particular that's been changed from back in its winning days? No, as far as we know, it's as original as it was then. It is the bike that finished the Grand Prix and the TT. Mick's ridden it since, and he still reckons it's the best handling bike he's ever ridden. Cool. Um, I noticed down on the engine, there's actually a shaft there, which isn't yeah. the kickstart, is it? It's not the kickstart, no. If I move the gear lever this side, you can see it moving. Ah, it, because it, then you can have a gear lever on both sides, depending on what the preference of the rider was. Correct. There were lots of English and Italian riders that in the 80s still rode with right-hand shift. Virginio Ferrari, Barry Sheen, for example, Mar Marco Lucinelli. Pe people have learnt on old, old British old stuff. Bikes, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, lots of fuel, I'm guessing, in a fuel tank on one of these, because they're thirsty. 32 litres normally for a Grand Prix, yeah. Yeah, so that's... Which makes it quite top heavy as well. Yeah, 25 or kilograms of extra fuel yeah. to top into. Yeah. Um, obviously, pre-mix, lots it of It is pre-mix, yeah, 35 to 1. You, oh, yeah. We used to use 747, Castrol 7.7 in the day. We use that or a motor product these days, depending on who we're sponsored with. Yeah, well, they're all presumably so much better than the oil that was originally in these. They are better, yes, uh, but we're still using quite a high oil content or ratio just to protect the internals. These things are over 40 years old and they need protecting. Spares are difficult to come by. Um, so, suspension is considerably more basic than we expect nowadays. Yes. Uh, I'm assuming there are cartridges in the forms of some description. No. It's uh -huh. damp, damper rod suspension in the front. There's no external adjustment other than being able to add a little bit of air pressure, um, which gives you a bit of progression on the fork spring. In, in effect, you could increase the air gap by or, pumping more air into the top of the fork. Yeah, well, you could make it stiffer towards the end of the travel. Um, and it's also got hydraulic anti-dive as well, which was big in the day. So we're the feeding brake pressure here directly to a valve that closes off the, the damping valve in the fork. Yes. So the compression damping is slowed through here. Um, it's, it's not a modern tech at all, but um, I, I thought they looked like vented discs, but they're not. But the rear is slightly vented. The rear is cast iron and vented. These are stainless and solid, yeah. Yeah. So this is square four. Square four disc valve two stroke. Um, so it, it's essentially four 125cc cylinders bolted together. If we lift the tank, you can see the layout there. Yeah. So you've got one, two, three and four and that's the firing order. Yeah, and exhaust by routing is basically wherever you can get to, to Yes, go. yeah. Um, and obviously expansion chambers as well. Because you've got the so yep. That's Good correct, there. yeah. Yeah, single pipe for each cylinder. And yeah. at this age, though, of course, they were silenced. Whereas one of the other bikes isn't. One of the other bikes here isn't silenced. The uh, Marsh, the Scrutineers did a, a joke test on the other one yesterday, and it was 120 decibels warming it up. So, uh, a little bit antisocial in the high street. Um, do notice, though, even back in these days, it is on a linkage shock, not direct action. It's on what Suzuki called full floater, where the, the shock absorber, the damper, is not bolted directly to the chassis. It's bolted to the swing arm at the bottom end, the rocker at the top, and the rocker is bolted to the chassis, and then there's a push rod to activate it back to the swing arm. So, so the shock in effect is actually working from two ends? It's been squeezed from both ends, yeah. Gives you a slight rising rate system. So actually, the rear suspension is Actually, more advanced than the front, really. It is, in a way, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the front is still quite crude, really. There is external adjustment on this for rebound and compression damping, but it's only two or three positions on each adjuster, not very much. Then, of course, you've got spring load, 
Um, and this one's early enough that it didn't even have a ride height adjuster here. It was done by a changing the pre-done on the spring, which is not really the way to adjust your ride height, but that's what the, that's what was there in the day. So, and it was effective enough to win a Grand Prix. And a TT. And a TT. Right. Shall we have a look at one of the others? Certainly. Okay, so here we have a 1976 RG500. This is a privateer model, so it's not a factory bike. Anybody could buy these, one of these, and go Grand Prix racing if they wanted. It's a 500 square four disc valve two-stroke again smaller carburetors than the other bike we've got here today no silences on the exhaust it was measured at 120 decibels yesterday as a bit of a joke test by the the uh, scrutineers this bike is a mark one chassis with a mark two engine but the mark two engine was basically the same as the mark one it's about 95 to 100 horsepower the other bike we've got here would have been about 120 horsepower. So in four years, they developed quite a lot. Um, this one we've had ridden by Phil Reed for a few years, which is why it's in the life bike colors. And it's here this weekend as a sort of a tribute to Phil as he, he passed last year. Uh, no anti-dive, no, anti no air assist. The only adjustment will be changing the springs, spring preload by opening the forks or changing the full coil and the air gap. Quite crude. Yes. Yeah. In fact, there's no topping out springs in the forks either. So when they fully extend, they clonk a little bit. But that's how they were, that, that's the system. At the rear end, we've got twin shocks, twin dampers, um, with no adjustment other than spring preload. significant yes it was being driven by racing in Grand Prix that was that was improving the breed every race there was something new to try pretty much every race and every year massive changes so the other bike that's in the background uh, that is very obviously a Yamaha is uh, a TZ 750 uh, so this is inline four cylinder 750 two stroke so instead of the square four arrangement we've got just four cylinders in a line like we're sort of a bit more used to on modern bikes um, but this bike's actually a new build so brand new sandcast crank cases uh, all the swinging arm and frame are new and it's actually bill simpson ian simpson's dad who's built uh, the swinging arm and the frame and i think he's actually assembled the bike um, and obviously there's a new KTEC shock. I mean, the shocks in these basically run from uh, the back of the tank almost all the way up to the headstock. So the shock's massive in these things. Um, and obviously it's on, yes. So look at that. What we'd consider a normal length shock and then a massive amount of shock literally just to connect the two ends of the bike together. So that is uh, very much not like you'd see anything modern, but it will, I suspect, ride considerably better than most of the stuff did in the period. Um, the forks look and they probably are actually one of the oldest bits in the bike because they're not um, they're not new um, but then it's on obviously period correct Brembo's uh, even the adjuster blocks to mount those calipers onto the forks are sort of period correct because Brembo would have made one thing some of the forks came from somebody else and you just had to make them all fit together solid discs there is no floating going on here um, and then even in here you can see exhaust pipes tangling around to try and get the lengths correct on all the pipes and so that's why you can see there's three exhaust pipes coming out of this side if we go around the other side one out down here and the idea is to try and get all the pipe lengths correct all the pipe lengths are the same so the cylinders all work the same but obviously the packaging and getting the expansion chambers in makes that surprisingly hard work and so you can see this one has even got a little bit of oil sheen because the carbs will blow back quite a lot of uh, oil and fuel mixture uh, and so it sort of coats everything so these things are not modern by the end of a race on one of these rider and bike would have been fairly well covered in fuel and oil mix